Hello everyone, and welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play. So far in this world, we have accomplished quite a lot. We've done some farming, we've gone to the nether, we have a beautiful flower tower, and we've done a ton of exploring. Despite all of these wonderful and amazing things, we have yet to take on a big project. So that's the goal for today. Honestly, I may venture out to say that this shall be the largest project I have ever done in single player survival. So, what do you say we get into it? Over my years as a Minecraft player, I've learned several things about building in survival mode. One of those things is efficiency. Uh, no, not that type of efficiency. You see, when I'm working on a large project, I want to be able to get it done in a time frame that doesn't make me burn out quickly. So I need to be efficient. The problem is, it's very early game, and I'm, uh, not very efficient yet. Right, Lucy? I mean, we're doing our best, but we don't have a lot of materials. We've got a lot of empty chests, some dirt, assortments of wood. What I'm saying is, it's, it's not looking great on the efficiency side of things. So, what do you say we work on some quality of life things around the grove? For example, this path here that at the moment stops right at the farm needs to kind of go all the way down there. It would be a lot easier than having to struggle up the cliffside every single time. So, I'm just going to sort of dig the staircase into the grass like this. It should just be able to flow straight downwards. I'll also line up a few brand new pillars so that we can get a platform going right here. So far, I'm liking this flow a lot better. All I gotta do now is extend this all the way down. The staircase is looking fantastic, but now there's the issue of the terrain, which honestly definitely needs some work. And to be honest, it'd probably be a lot easier to do terrain work if I actually had an enchanted shovel and also helmet and leggings while I'm at it. Now, I suppose I could go set up my spider grinder for a little while and get the XP, but there's a different way, and it's much more efficient. I'm gonna grab my lovely lucky pickaxe, and let's head to the nether, shall we? Hello, child? I need you to not tell your parents what's happening here, okay? The nether has all of this lovely quartz, and we were spit out in the exact perfect location to get some. We're already up to half a stack of blocks. Oop! My bad. The nether makes me a little sad. But it's worth it for pretty blocks. Mission accomplished. Let's go home. Okay, perfect. So, with my quartz acquired and 33 levels, I think we can go enchant now and hopefully get some even better gear. I need a couple of very important things for this project. One is a really good pickaxe, and the other is a really good shovel. Bonus points if I can get my armor. My current pickaxe is okay, but it's only got efficiency on it, and it's almost dead because of no end breaking. So, let's test and see what we can get. Respiration 3? Oh, okay, let's do that. Oh, that's actually quite a good helmet. Okay, I'm glad I went for that one. I'm gonna actually take that. On a pickaxe. Hey, that's pretty good. We can now combine these two and get yet another amazing fortune pickaxe. I don't really need this for the fortune, so this is actually going to be my current work pick. Now then, it's time we discuss today's project. This is the entrance to the grove. It has a lot of potential. However, it could be much better, and I have a vision for it. Uh, this shall be my viewing spot. So there is the entrance. And if you take a little look up the mountain, that is my original path that me and Dandy took to get into the grove. I think that that was a momentous occasion for this Let's Play. So I've decided that I would like to preserve the legacy of Dandy and I in this world forever. I'm gonna build us giant statues. Not just any statues though, oh no, we are sticking on theme, sort of. For this episode, I've been inspired by Lord of the Rings. There's some particular statues in the Lord of the Rings universe that you may already know of, but I'll put them on screen just in case you don't. I would like to build a version of those statues customized to myself and Dandy here in this world, at this epic entrance right here. Oh, hello. See, this is exactly why I need statues. To intimidate my enemies. It would work, I know it. Hey, uh, do you just, can I, can I interest you in staying in a hole? the rest of your life. Thank you. Yeah, good talk. 
I figure if we're going to have giant statues at the entrance, I had better prepare some epic gateways as well. So I'm doing sort of an elven inspired design here. Oh, hello. And that will be the entrance to the grove. Oh, it's gonna be epic. I feel like every Let's Play I do, I find myself using a bunch of blocks that I've never really used before because I just love the challenge of trying to use each and every block in the game. Now, jungle wood, diorite, and quartz is not something I thought I'd be using before, but I think it's going to work, actually. I'm going to use the diorite as, like, a roof, uh, the quartz is, like, the pillar, and then the inside wall is the jungle wood. Who's dying? Hello? Could you die quieter? I'm building. Honestly, it's a little bit weird, but I think I like it. For the next part of this journey, I'm going to need blocks, like a lot of blocks, which is great because I have uh, a, a few blocks, but some of these are going to need to be stone and some of them are going to be cobble and I'm also going to need cobble deep slate, none of which I have enough of. A statue of the size that I'm going for is going to take thousands of blocks and all I've got is 12 coal. Yep, yeah, I'm sure that'll go well. Maybe it's time for an upgrade. I need cobblestone. And I also need coal to smelt the cobblestone into regular stone since I don't have silk touch yet. Seems like an easy way to get this job done efficiently would just be to dig out this tunnel. After all, I need roughly this much of it completely dug out of the terrain. And hopefully that should yield me tons of cobblestone for the statue project and also a little bit of coal to smelt some. Oh, hey look, I was right. Gonna try to do this top section first. Yep, this might take a while. The tunnel is nearly complete. We're almost there. There it is, everyone. The tunnel is complete and it's beautiful. It's yielded me tons of cobblestone as well and a bit of coal. Now that the tunnel's been dug and we've acquired the cobblestone that we need for the project, it's time to worry about the stone. Smelting cobblestone gives you stone. I have exactly one furnace hooked up to do this job. So you could say that this is not a very efficient process. Not at all. So with that in mind, I think it's time for a brand new build. A blacksmith of sorts, or maybe a stone worker's house of sorts. Uh, basically a place where we can smelt things at a fast speed. And I thought that this layer right here was the perfect place to do it. Just gonna need a few building materials and then I should be able to get straight to work. I'm going to create this build sort of into the cliffside, almost like it has its own retaining wall of sorts using this cobblestone. Hopefully something like this will look good and we'll be able to enter a doorway that's just right here. I think that'll actually look pretty good. It seems a little counterproductive that I'm using cobblestone for this build, but I just, I think it'll fit in better. I think this is about tall enough for where the roof can start. And then I think I'll just do a pretty simple A-frame roof. Just up like this and then around. I love using full blocks for my roofs. I know it's not for everybody, but I like it. Instead of leaving this as just a plain like A-frame house, I'm going to add a little bit of interest to it by putting a tower out of stone brick right here. Basically, this will intercept the roof line here and hopefully give it a cool look. I think that should do it. <laughs> then for the walls to hopefully make them pop, I'm going to use some of that quartz that we got. Might have to change it to smooth quartz. But you get the idea, it looks pretty good. Now, you may be wondering, why I've dyed all these sheep paint. I decided that in order to be best inspired by Dandy, we ought to build with pink wool. It makes sense in my head, don't ask. I've never done a pink wool roof before, but I think I'm gonna like it. I imagine that eventually we'll also be able to mix in some pink glazed terracotta, pink concrete, you know, just lots of other blocks to sort of detail with. Is that boat moving on its own? I'm worried we may be haunted. I'm sure it's fine, right? There's nice ghosts in Minecraft, probably. Some final details, oops. Some final details, and I think this'll be complete. I actually really like the look of that so far, especially with the trees right here and the path going up. It's cute, I'm enjoying it. With this chimney, the final detail on this house shall be complete. I definitely never thought I'd use pink for a build like this, but honestly, it works. Now, let's get the interior set up, shall we? Super smelter removal complete, which gave me a ton of levels, so uh, yeah, silk touch. I can't believe I've just gotten silk touch on a shovel. <laughs> now I need it on a pickaxe. That's okay though, a, a shovel is still good. It's just, you know, it, it could be better. 
So the interior can now have three stations, I think. They'll be set up pretty much exactly how it was in the starter house, there's just three of them. Mission accomplished. It's not perfect, but it's five times faster than it was before. So, I think I'll take the win. It's time, everyone. I'm a little nervous, I will admit. Darlene, it's time for a really big single player build. I'm excited. Now, I am very lucky to have Darlene here because Darlene can actually hold some things for me. So, if I just plop a chest on Darlene like so, I can then put a bunch of cobblestone inside Darlene. This is a big build, Darlene, I'm sorry. There's, there's a lot to carry. You got it, though, I believe. Radio, I've got my construction donkey. And we're ready to build. Things inside our stone house are going well. It's just a little bit of smooth stone at the moment, but this will continue working over time. So that's good. No, Darlene, Darlene. No, we can't go wandering off, Darlene. Come on. We're off to do a big build. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna put you right there. You're gonna guard the entrance and uh, I'll get started. Rain is not ideal for construction. It's okay though. As with any good build, we must start with a plan. And in this case, the plan starts with the feet of the statue. It's a little weird, but I think the feet will go here. Because I want this build to tell a very epic story of how I came towards this grove with my pink sheep dandy, I'm going to have my pink sheep dandy on this side and myself on this side. You'll be able to walk between them as you enter the mountain. It's a vision, it's a good vision. For the human statue, I'm gonna mark it the height like this. Basically, I'll just build a straight pillar upwards. This will be sort of the spine of the build and I'll be able to see where I should place the head. So from our viewing spot, you can see we have the entrance, the donkey, and then big statue right here. And I think that looks wonderful. So you can see where I've marked out where the head will go and then that's roughly the shoulders and then I'll probably mark it some hips like here. Should be easy organic making. I got it all under control. Just when things were starting to get peaceful around here again, you show up. Come on, those are my sheep's hooves. I was just starting to plan them. They're gonna be whole epic legs. Look, they're, go they're gonna look great. I'm using, using texture differences in the stone and the cobblestone, and it's gonna look really cool. So annoying. Thank you. Oh, I look rough. Uh, darling, don't, I'm all right, I promise. Just slightly porcupine-like. Uh, n nothing I can't handle. So, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, I'm going to use the texture differences in stone to get a statue that looks a little wooly like a sheep, hopefully. So we'll have the plain leg that looks like that, which is like the skin color, and then this cobblestone will be the wool color. Uh, but none of it is actually colored because it's a statue. I did briefly think about doing it in color, I will admit, but I think this works better for the statue vibe. The proportions for this are definitely going to be the toughest part, but hopefully that's tall enough for a sheep. Ah, huh? Those are not bad legs, huh? Those are sheep legs. They're definitely sheep legs. Darlene? They look like sheep legs, right? You know, when I was dragging all of this cobble out of the mines, I never imagined I'd be building a sheep's body, is it? But here we are. It's a good day to be a Minecrafter. You know, I think if I do the sheep's body hollow, it could be like a headquarters. <laughs> like we could see outside of the sheep's eyes into the open and we could set up a whole system in here for surveillance of the grove. I have officially run out of cobblestone. It's okay though. Darlene has more. Darlene, thank you. I require all of your cobblestone. Oh, and you can take my birch to it. Honestly, as weird as it is, it's looking pretty good so far. I'm happy. Would you look at this sheep body? It's a good sheep body, I think. Good sheep interior too. Great insides, very healthy. I think though what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just back this sheep up all the way into the cliff and then we'll blend it into the mountain. So it's one with the mountain, if you will. Now, it's time we worry about the head. Basically, I'm doing this whole thing proportion to an actual sheep and the real life dandy. So uh, I just gotta figure out where the head is on a sheep. I need a model. Is there a model? Hello. Yes, I require a sheep model. If you would, okay. So if you could just stand still for, stand, okay, all right. St this is not the time to go caving, I need a model. So if we look, there's like three pixels here and three pixels here. So the top half has the head and then the head is like a solid two pixels above and it's got this little out section, like right. Okay, I think I could do that. I think I could do that. I don't exactly have the same amount of pixels to work with here, but if we take like the top three and then go in and eat, where's the center? Uh, this is the center. 
This is definitely in the top 10 weirdest ways I've ever used cobblestone, but honestly, it's very effective. Getting rid of all of my excess stone, and it's not even been that difficult really, because it's just a bunch of cubes. Now, the thing about that sheep is it had this cute little extra bit on its face, so I think I'm gonna do that out of stone, so that it's a different texture. So, slight oversight on my part, I definitely need some torches before I fill in the back. Otherwise, I'm gonna have an accidental sheep mob spawner, which I, I don't want. Come on, Darlene, we're off to get some more building materials. I have exactly 12 coal to my name. I'd better make it work. All right, Darlene, back to our building site. You know, I can't believe I've never considered donkeys for carrying things back and forth before. This is so easy in the early game. I don't have shulker boxes right now, and having a donkey means that I don't have a chest monster out there. I just, I just have a donkey. It's way easier, to be honest. Oh, the beautiful sheep is nearly complete. I love it. I think I did it. I think we've built sheep. Yep, that's definitely a sheep. Oh, I like it. I don't normally go for this like pixel arty sort of style, but honestly, it looks pretty good in this situation. Now for the more challenging half, me. I'm I'm the more challenging half. I'm, I'm going to try to make a statue of me. It's not going to be entirely accurate because I've decided I don't want to build the legs. Unfortunately, in Minecraft, I do happen to have legs. I'm going to put myself in a dress. I know my character's not actually wearing a dress, but I want her to be a little princessy and match Dandy's energy. So I'm gonna make a statue of me in a dress. I've decided since it's my statue and I'm the one building it that I can make whatever decisions like that that I want to, it should be fine. It's a little lazy, I'll admit, but uh, it should be okay still. Now, how about we get to work? Do you think that me building a statue of myself as a pink sheep princess means that I have an ego? I'm not sure, but it felt really good to build this. I honestly like the way that it turned out. Yep, it's definitely one of the weirder things I've ever built, but honestly, I think I like it. There are, however, a few very key details missing and things that I could add to make them even better. But for that, we need more supplies because our lovely Darlene over here has run out of cobblestone. 40 cobblestone is not enough to finish this project. I was thinking one of the things that I could do to add detail is to add hair. Now, my character has hair, see? And it's red hair. The block of stone I can think of that most closely matches that is granite. Unfortunately, I have no granite. So Darlene, we are on a mission to get granite. The only issue is I'm not sure if I actually have any granite. I do luckily have some spruce, but granite is a little harder to come by. No granite, no granite. We have no granite, Lucy, can you believe it? New mission, find granite. There's gotta be some in these mines somewhere. There we go, there's some granite, perfect. This should be fantastic for building with, and I think I only need a couple of stacks. Okay, granite acquired. Now, the next thing that I need is some deep slate, which is right there, but I have to get deeper for it. Hello, don't mind me. Here's some deep slate. I'll just mine a little bit of this for some details. Hello. Ah, okay, blocks acquired. Now, before something falls on my head, I think I'm gonna get out of here. Are you ready, Darlene? Come on. So, I think I have the materials that I need to finish off this build. We're really just on to the details of the whole thing now, which is really exciting. Now, I've left my statue a little bit purposefully blank at the head shape because I'm gonna add hair and hair is gonna get rid of a lot of the skull shape anyway. So why would I spend time on it? This video is just me being as lazy as possible while building statues. I'll be honest, I do the same technique when I'm drawing or painting. If you mess up the anatomy, just cover it up. It's fine, right, okay. Uh, let's put some granite hair on this statue, I guess. Uh, I think I did it. You know, it's a little weird standing on a giant statue that's meant to be me, but uh, it, it's cool. I think I like it. Now, of course, it's nearly impossible to tell if I like it or not from this close up, so let's go to the looking spot. Whoa. What was that? Hello? Oh, hi, you've got a block too. Very cool. Where do you come from? Can I look at you? Oh, go oh, sorry. Uh, whoa. That was not nice. Not nice at all. That Enderman was looking a little too hard at my statues for somebody who doesn't like being looked at. Speaking of, there they are. 
I think I love them, to be honest. Just a couple finishing touches needed, I think. First of all, I think our lovely dandy statue needs a sheep's face. And luckily I have some granite left over and some cobble deep slate, so maybe I can use that. A, a sheep's face right here, like a mouth. Oh boy, it, it might be a little derpy. I'm definitely not a sheep building expert, but I feel their faces are very derpy no matter what you do with them. Normally I'd be against adding a face to a statue, but I think in this situation, it works, it's fine. We don't have to take it too seriously. The next bit of this project is going to be my favorite bit. We need leaves, lots of them. Luckily, I already had two stacks saved up. I've always got leaves on me, Darlene, always. So my thought was just down here where it needs to blend into the terrain a little bit better to just place a bunch of leaves growing like vines up around it. I think we can also use some moss, some like glow berries, some glow lichen for sure, all around these statues to give them that ancient and magical feel that I'm going for. Yep, I really like that. I think that it adds so much. Oh, Darlene, do you like it? Leaves fix everything. They truly do. It's like the universal rule of building that if something looks off, you just add leaves to it and it looks okay again. Of course, Dandy's lovely hooves are gonna get some too. Maybe not as many, just because I don't wanna take away from the one layer of hoof we have down here. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness, I love it. Oh, I can just picture a large road going through here and the road that me and Dandy took remaining up there kind of in sight. I like it, it's really magical. Whoop. It was a big task to build this today, but it definitely does a good job of telling the story of the area, so I think it's worth it. Darlene? What do you think, Darlene? Do you think it was worth it? Oh, it was so worth it. It was absolutely worth it. We gotta go tell Dandy. Dandy! Dandy, come on, I built us a whole area. You've gotta come see it. Come on, come on. Dandy, do you remember our first adventure together? Look, Dandy, I've made it out of stone. Cobblestone, deep slate, and granite mined from the mines of the grove. We're gonna be here forever, Dandy. Well, everyone, on this note, I do believe that's mission accomplished for this episode. I had a lot of fun. This is definitely the biggest project I've ever taken on in early game survival like this, and I'm really proud of it. I think the Grove project is going absolutely wonderfully, and I hope you've enjoyed watching me work on this project, even if it was a little silly. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting this series, everyone, and I hope I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Say goodbye, Dandy! Goodbye!